All right, we're going to talk about scientific and engineering notation, how engineers and scientists express either very large or very small numbers. So first of all, let's review scientific notation. There's a number of sites on the, on the web where you can find out about scientific notation. We'll just do a real quick review. Uh, scientific notation is used to express very large or very small numbers. Uh, it allows us to use our calculators to compute numbers larger than 10 decimal places or smaller than the tenth decimal place. Most calculators can't do that without some kind of assistance or special notation. And it's all based on using powers of 10. So a number in scientific notation that is expressed as a number greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 9 and then multiplied by 10 raised to some exponent. So it's going to always look like a decimal b, c, d, as many decimals as you want or need here, times 10 to the x. All right? And a is always going to be between 1 and 9, inclusive. So let's look at some examples. Uh, let's look at 36.5 million. Well, 36.5 million would be expressed as 3 decimal 65 times 10 to the 7. And how do we get from one to the other? Well, we're looking for scientific notation to have the decimal in between the 3 and the 6. So how do we decide on the power of 7, or of power of 10? Well, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's how we get to our decimal place. And so that means we need to multiply 3.65 times 10 7 times, or times 10 to the 7th, in order to get to the actual number in decimal notation. So the power of 10 indicates how many places to move the decimal place from this number to get it into a decimal number. Uh, in this case, the 3.65 would have the decimal moved seven places to the right in order to make the 36.5 million. So let's look at a very small number. In this case, we have 0 0.00000000025. That gets a little cumbersome to work with if we're trying to do a calculation. Once again, in scientific notation, we are looking to have our decimal place between the 2 and the 5. And so we will need to have a power of 10 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 10 to the 10th. Now in this case, the negative exponent indicates that we move the decimal to the left. From 2.5, we move it to the left 10 places to get the actual decimal number. So what is engineering notation then, and why do we need it? Well, it's very similar to scientific notation. It uses powers of 10, but only in increments of 3, or multiples of 3. And this matches then the SI nomenclature for sizes of numbers. So we know that, example, for example, to go from meters to millimeters, we divide by 1,000. If we go from uh, farads to picofarads, we divide by 10 to the 12. If we go from meters to kilometers, we multiply by 1,000. If we go from bytes to terabytes, we multiply times 10 to the 12. And so what we have here is a English, in English, a way to describe the size of a number and relate that to a standard uh, uh, exponent of 10. So engineering notation then is a number between 0.1 and 999 multiplied by a power of 10 in multiples of 3. So engineering notation is going to look like A decimal B C D. And once again, we carry as many decimals as we need times 10 to the x. The difference here is that A is going to be between 0.1 and 999, and x is some multiple of 3. So you're going to see things like 10 to the 0, 10 to the 3, 10 to the 6, and again, this would meet uh, uh, kilo and mega. So as an example, let's go back to our 36.5 million. In engineering notation, we are looking for either 10 to the 3 or 10 to the 6. One, one, two, three. Well, that's not right because this is still bigger than than 999. So we'll come one, two, three more, and this is where our decimal place is going to be: 36.5 times 10 to the six. 
So this would be 36.5 mega units. It might be joules of energy, in which case it would be 36.5 megajoules. So let's look at that small number. In this case, we're looking for, again, multiples of 3. So there's 3, there's 3, there's 3, and we could call this 0.25 times 10 to the minus 9. Notice we moved, we need to move towards the left nine places in order to get from this number to that number. And so we might then be able to call this 0.25 nano units of some description. If, if we were talking about something in an electron microscope, we might talk about nanometers. We could also express this as 3, 6, 9, 12, or 250 times 10 to the minus 12, or 250 pico units. We might we might have that as a as a capacitor, 250 pico farads. So you can see that this number in engineering notation would be valid in either one of these two uh, modes in engineering notation. So the question, of course, comes up, and I haven't seen this posted anywhere. Why bother with this engineering and scientific notation? Well, the reason is it simplifies our calculations. We often don't even have to pick up our calculator in order to, to do a calculation. And so let's just look at a couple of examples. Let's say, for example, that we wanted to multiply two numbers together. 4 times 10 to the 6 times 3 times 10 to the 4th. Well, if we want to multiply those two numbers together, the first thing we can recall is the uh, um, associative law of mathematics, which means that we can move these things around. So we can do 4 times 3 times 10 to the 6 times 10 to the 4. Now, if we group those together with the associative law, we can make this as 12 times. And here we use the rule of exponents. If I have like bases I, and I multiply the numbers together, I simply add the exponents. So this becomes 10 to the 10. And so this 12 times 10 to the 10. But that's not scientific notation. Scientific notation, we need to have one decimal place. We need to be here. And so this becomes 1.2 times 10 to the 11. Notice that because I had 12 here, I moved it one place to the left here to get my decimal in the right place, I needed to multiply by one more 10, which makes that 10 to the 11. So this is the scientific notation. Now, if I want that in engineering notation, I've got to get this into either a 9 or a 12. So let's move this one more place. 0.12 times 10 to the 12 would then be an engineering notation. I could also move it two more places this way and make that 120 times 10 to the 9. Both of those would be perfectly legitimate as an engineering notation. Now let's look at another example very quickly. 6 times 10 to the 15 divided by 2 times 10 to the 8th. Well, how do I do that? Well, let's take a look at this as being 6 divided by 2 times 10 to the 15th divided by 10 to the 8th. That's just another grouping that we did. So in order to do this, now I'm going to do 6 divided by 2 is 3. And my like bases, when I divide, I subtract the exponents. That makes that times 10 to the 5th. I'm sorry, 10 to the 7. If that's now 10 to the 7, 3 times 10 to the 7, once again, 3 times 10 to the 7 is is perfectly legitimate as scientific notation. We would express that as 3.0 times 10 to the 7. But it's not engineering notation. If I want to make this times 10 to the 6, I'm going to have to move my decimal place over 1. So this becomes 30 times 10 to the 6. And that would be legitimate. If I needed to go times 10 to the 8 times 10 to the 9, I would be too small for, for, science, for engineering notation. And so this is the engineering notation. This is the scientific notation. So let's take a look at something that's just a little bit more tricky. What happens if I need to add these two numbers together? Well, this gets a little more tricky. 4 times 10 to the 6 plus 3 times 10 to the 4. Now, we all know that there's, there's no way that we can add apples and 
bananas. It just doesn't happen. And that's what we have here is a situation of apples and bananas. And so in order to make this work, I need to get these both into the same order of magnitude. So I can do that one of two ways. I can do 4 times 10 to the 6th plus 0 0.03 times 10 to the 6th, which makes that 4.03 times 10 to the 6th. If I'm so inclined, I could go the other way. This would be 400 times 10 to the 4 plus 3 times 10 to the 4. And that would make that 403 times 10 to the 4. This is neither engineering nor scientific notation. If I want to do that, I need to get to my decimal place over here. And that would give me 4.03 times 10 to the 6th. And sure enough, that's the same answer as I had up here. And so that's how that's going to work. All right. The next thing that students struggle with is how this works on their calculator. And so I didn't want to talk about that for a few minutes. I'm not a sharp salesman, uh, but this is the calculator that many of my students use. Uh, and the one thing that you have to recognize right away is that we are not going to use this 10 to the x key, this key here, or the log key. That 10 to the x key is intended for use with logarithms. It is not how we express engineering or scientific notation. Many students make that mistake, and their answers are often out by an order of magnitude. And so we are not going to use that key. The key we are going to use is the exp key. Some calculators show it as an EE key. Um, and so that's going to give us our proper display of engineering and scientific notation. When we push the correct key, we will get a little additional number up here that shows as an exponent. When we see that number, that does not mean that this number is raised to that exponent. Rather, it's times 10 to that exponent. All right, so on the Sharp calculator, you will find that there are also a setup. On every other calculator, there's a, there's a setup as well. And if you read your manual or, or go on the web to look for the information, you'll find out. But for the Sharp calculator that my students use, if you use the Setup button and then follow the menus and use 1, 1, you will get to scientific notation. And all your numbers will show up as entries and outputs of scientific notation. If you do Setup 1 and then 2, you'll get engineering notation for all of your uh, uh, answers and inputs. If you do setup 2, and then you will select a number of decimals to display for a fixed decimal display. And lastly, a setup 1, 3 will return you to the normal floating decimal mode in case you're finished with your engineering or scientific notation. Most calculators will automatically show in engineering or in scientific notation if you go over the number of digits that they can display in normal mode. 